Welcome to Electron Online, and now let's move on to quadratic equations, how to solve them. Now, you probably realize there's lots of different kinds of quadratic equations, but there's some general techniques that we need to know how to use. For example, when you have something straightforward like this, typically the technique that you can use, if it's factorable, use factoring. If not, use the quadratic equation or use completing the square. And we have some examples in the next several videos on how to do that. Next, you might have equations that have fractional expressions like this. In this case, you want to go ahead and multiply both sides by the lowest common denominator. And let me show you what that would look like in this case. Here you can see that the lowest common denominator would be the product of these two. So what you want to do here is multiply both sides by x times x minus 5. And here, of course, this time x times x minus 5. But of course, 0 times anything still will be 0. So the left, the right side will be 0. And here, of course, you have to multiply that out. So that's the general technique. Now, be careful when you do that. You may introduce false answers. And so at the end, you always want to check to make sure that every answer you found is indeed a plausible, valid answer by plugging it back into the original equation, making sure that works out. In a case like this, what you may want to do first is factor this denominator right here and see what it looks like. So on the right side, this is equal to 12 divided by, since it's the difference of squares, this factors into x plus 3 times x minus 3. And then you realize, wow, those are the same two denominators that I have here in a separate format. So here this looks like x plus 1 times x minus 3 plus 4 over x plus 3. And so what you end up doing in this case is, again, multiplying both sides of the equation by the lowest common denominator. So in this case, you want to multiply the left side by x plus 3 times x minus 3. And here, the right side, same thing, x plus 3 times x minus 3. Of course, this cancels out this. On the right side, you end up with 12. And when you do this, notice that on, on uh, the first case, x minus 3 is cancel out. So you end up with x plus 3 times x plus 1 plus 4 times. And in the second case, the x plus 3 is cancel out. And here, left with an x, um, uh, x minus 3. And that equals 12. And then you go ahead and use the techniques there that you would use in a case like that. Finally, when you end up with something like that has radicals in it, if there's only one radical, you want to isolate this on one side and everything else on the other side. If you have two radicals in the equation, you want to separate the radicals, one on one side and one on the other side. And there's some examples for you in some later videos. But here in this case, what you want to do is move this to the other side. So this becomes the square root of 2 minus x is equal to um, that would be x minus 1 minus 4. When you move the 4 across, it becomes minus. You can combine like terms. So we have the square root of 2 minus x is equal to x minus 5. And then you would square both sides to get rid of the radicals. On the left side, you end up with 2 minus x. And on the right side, you end up with uh, x squared minus 10x plus 25. And then you go ahead and use, again, the techniques you would use over here to solve the problem. But again, when you do this, you may introduce a false answer. And you want to check, again, like you did over here, make sure that all the answers you end up with are valid when you plug them back into the original equation. Because in some cases, it, it, you have introduced something that is not valid using that technique. So these are some general techniques you want to use when you solve for quadratic equations. And now let's go to the next several videos and show you some real examples of how to do that.